Hello everybody, welcome back to Wicked Awesome Gardening and I am super excited today because we are actually gardening. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm very excited because for the first time ever I'm actually planting my garlic on time. <laughs> Every year I get garlic and I say that I'm going to get it planted on time. It's going to get in the ground and things come up and then it just never ends up happening and then I end up with poor dried out garlic that's gone to waste. I have found that if you do get a warm snap in the middle of winter, you can get it in the ground. The rule with garlic generally, if you can get it in the ground, if the ground is workable, you can plant garlic. So I got it in at the very end of December a couple years ago and was able to harvest it that summer. And it was small, but it definitely made heads. It was nothing like this beauty, woo, but I got garlic, so that was something. This year, finally though, I am getting the garlic in the ground at the right time. Now, for some of you, this may seem a little early because it is only the 2nd of October, but I'm up here in New Hampshire. By now, technically, we're supposed to have gotten a frost. Our first frost date here, a uh, little north of Concord, northwest-ish, uh, is about September 21st to September 30th, somewhere in that week. Well, we haven't had a frost yet. We've had all nights in the 40s. Uh, in a couple of weeks, it's gonna dip down into the 30s, but we're still not in any danger of frost for a couple of weeks. So time to get the garlic in. Uh, usually you wanna give it a good three to four weeks before your last frost date. So when you think about it by the calendar, maybe I'm a little late, but by the weather forecast, I'm right on time. This is music garlic. It is a hard neck garlic and being that I'm in the north, hard neck garlic is going to be your best choice. If you are down south somewhere warm, you can plant hard neck still and you can plant soft neck up here too, but uh, typically hard neck for the north, south, uh, soft neck down south. It just takes a little bit of extra technique um, if you're gonna grow, I think, hard necks down south. I'm, I'm a little unfamiliar with uh, their growing situation. Now, the great thing about this music garlic is that it was grown locally. And actually, I wanna give a shout out to Jessica from Thunder Bluff Farms. Uh, it's a small farm that uh, she grows garlic and lots of veggies and she raises pigs. You should check her out. She's not on YouTube, she's on Facebook, Thunder Bluff Farms, and her videos are really entertaining, really informational, she's really funny. Uh, so you definitely wanna go on Facebook and check her out. But she harvested her garlic up this year, she had it out for sale, and the great thing about it being grown locally is that it's been acclimatized. So it's a few generations of growing up here and thriving clearly because this is a massive head of garlic. So it's clearly thriving in our conditions. So the more locally grown you can get, the better. What I got from her was this music garlic and the slightly smaller, although I've already broken it up into all the cloves, uh, German red. So we're planting those two today. And I ended up picking up another variety from the store. Um, this is called Purple Glazer. It's another hard neck variety. The only thing is I expected seed garlic, you know, from the store to be just as good as the uh, garlic that I got from local, but you can see the size difference. And this was the biggest out of all of them. Some of the, the uh, heads were half this size and it's not that it's a smaller variety. It's just that all of the heads of garlic in all the uh, hard neck varieties that they had at the store were teeny tiny. Um, you want big honking cloves like come from this one. Like, let's see, where's a good one? Here's one clove of music garlic. That is huge, I love it. I am so excited. I'm actually getting it in the ground at the right time. Okay, so let's get to planting. I've already put a whole bunch of this into cloves. We're gonna dump that out. We'll just quickly get this one open. And I'm not peeling the paper off. You don't want to peel the paper off. You just want to break them open. Leave the paper on 
because if you end up exposing what's inside the paper, if you get to the, the inside, um, you're gonna leave it open to rot. So you don't want to plant ones that you end up breaking open like that. So we're just gonna pop them right off. They come pop, pop, pop right off. And you can see what they mean by hard neck because that's what's left afterwards is a ugh, takes a lot to, to bend it. A little hard neck of, of this, the stock there. So, all right, <laughs> my foot's falling asleep. I got to move. So I got this two by four foot raised bed from Amazon. And I got to tell you, um, it's pretty cheap. I haven't even used it for growing yet. I just used it as a chick brooder and already it started to rust in areas. So it may be cheap um, and that can be a great thing, um, but it's really flimsy. Um, you want to compare it to like my Ollie bed back here. This is sturdy. Um, there's been no bowing or anything like that, but this I've just got the soil in it for the first time and it's already bowing out to the sides. Um, so definitely something to be said for the quality there but if you need something to grow in and this is cheap this is easy do it it'll last you a few years anyway um, should be just fine so we'll use it for now um, and I don't know how long I'll actually keep this I might be getting rid of it next year we'll we'll just have to see it's oh, it, it really is just flimsy but it will do for growing some garlic so let's get at it so I've filled the bed. It's about um, a foot deep. And so I filled it up half with the compost from the goats, uh, the goat bedding. So their manure and their bedding has been sitting and composting. So that's filling half the bed. And then I had more compost left over from earlier this year uh, that I had used for this raised bed. So I just topped it off and that's what we're going to we're going to grow this in. Uh, if I had some um, extra fertilizer, something like that, I would go ahead and use that like a, a garden tone fertilizer, uh, just an all purpose. I would put that in here and just kind of zhuzh it in. Uh, but this should be fine. I'll probably top dress and, and scratch in some in the spring. So when planting garlic, you want to use the biggest, fattest cloves. Like this is a big honking clove here. It's like bigger than my thumb. Um, sometimes you'll have little dinky ones like this that you can hardly see. Uh, typically you don't want to plant those. I'm going to plant them anyway. I'm planting all of this garlic. What comes up, what comes up. And if the little ones give me little heads of garlic, well, those are the ones that I will eat next year. And then I will use for seed garlic, the ones that give me cloves like this. So easy enough. I like to space them about four inches apart. So that's my whole hand length. And I've got, to make things easier, I've got a stick. So every four inches, so we're gonna go four inches out that way, four inches that way. I'm just gonna make a hole and you're going to point them pointy side up and this little basal area pointing down. And you wanna cover the top by about two inches. So I'm gonna leave that uncovered for just a moment so that I can put my hand down. There's my next spot. Take that, drive that down in there. And then we're gonna do this on center. So I've got a garlic here, here, and here. So now the next row, I'm gonna go a little further over and we're gonna get one in between each. And that's gonna give us the maximum growing space. But also, we're not gonna be sacrificing potential space that we could be using. There we go. And this row is also about four inches from the other row. Pointy side up, basal side down. Okay. 
And you can see I'm getting about the length of my thumb, like downward. So from here down, you wanna give it a couple of inches. And then we'll just go and cover them up. And I'm putting this stick here as my marker for now to know that this side of the bed has all my music garlic. So I'm already thinking this bed is not gonna be big enough for all of my garlic. So I'm gonna plant some of my German red in here and I'm also gonna plant my purple glazer. We're gonna do the purple glazer first and then whatever the German red that I can fit and then it's about time anyway. I'm gonna have to sacrifice my flowers here. I mean, the cosmos are still growing like crazy, but I think it's time to gather all the seeds from the Mexican sunflowers and the zinnias and uh, whatever else I can get. There are some cosmos there that I can get the seeds from. Uh, we're gonna sacrifice that bed and it's gonna become garlic as well. So next I'm gonna do the purple glazers and there's only about a handful of these. Most of them are little dinky cloves, but we've got a couple really nice big ones. So hopefully we get some good garlic out of this and I can uh, use it as seed garlic next year. So let's go ahead and get those in. So now let's choose the biggest and the best of the German red. That's a good start. All right, so we've got the music garlic, purple glazer in the middle, and over here we've got the German red. And next we're gonna water them in. Now what I would usually do at this point also is I would mulch it. Um, actually, I don't have anything to mulch it with at the moment. I don't wanna use obviously the hay uh, from the goats because it hasn't composted down and it's gonna end up with seeds in it. So we don't wanna use that. I haven't found a good source for straw yet that I know hasn't been uh, sprayed with things like Grazon or Roundup, you know, all those gliophosphates. So we don't wanna have anything that's got pesticides sprayed on it. So I'm sourcing that. But if you don't have access to good straw, if you don't want to use hay, because I don't, um, you can use fresh leaves. You just want to tear them up a little bit because uh, they will kind of mat down together and the garlic will have a hard time pushing up through. So I like to mulch the leaves a little bit before I put them on top. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go get some shavings, just some plain pine shavings, the same thing that you would use for bedding. Um, in the chicken coops. I'm actually out. I've got to run to the store, um, but it's just clean pine shavings. And so you just put them on there. It's light and fluffy. It'll stay packed down as long as you wet it a little first. And uh, the garlic will have no problem popping right up. And over the next year, while the uh, garlic is growing, it'll start to kind of mulch down and uh, break down into the soil. So it's going to feed your soil. So it's something that's really great to use if you have it on hand, uh, but it's also inexpensive if you need to go out and get some. Like I'm going to get a whole huge compressed brick because it's time to clean the chicken coop again and all that fun jazz. So it's only about four or five dollars. So it'll get me through all my garlic and the uh, chicken coop uh, cleaning and then some. So that'll be pretty great. Um, I'm gonna give these flowers a few more days. There's some really pretty zinnias on here that are still drying. Uh, no problem if I get the rest of this garlic in next week. And you know what? I've got 15 cloves of the um, the German red planted, so if I don't get around to it, I won't feel horrible because I can just eat that garlic. <laughs> There's nothing that says that I can't use the rest of those smaller cloves uh, in my food. So it might be food, it might 
probably will go in here. I'm just waiting for all of this to uh, to die back so that I can I can have these beautiful flowers again. Um, these ones are a little small, but we had some some gorgeous gorgeous zinnias. So that's it. Garlic planting is simple. Get the big cloves, put them in the ground, pointy side up, and give them a watering in. Mulch them and leave it, and it'll come back up in spring. So, woohoo! Oh, side note, side note, if they do start growing now and you do get a bit of garlic poking up, that's fine. Just add another layer of mulch to keep them down under the soil. That way, when it does get cold, when it does freeze, they'll just die back and it'll be fine. But yay, for the first time ever, I got my garlic in on time and I'm gonna have garlic growing in the spring, woo. And now we've gotta get ready for the crazy, crazy busy season because I've got about a month to get a whole bunch of stuff done. We've got to get the barn prepared uh, for winter because uh, we've got to do the fall clean out so that it's all ready for winter. Breeding season is coming. So I've got to actually build a whole other pen and shelter uh, for the baby goats for uh, Mirabelle and Cleo because they cannot be in the pen with Rebel. It'll be too much. I can't put them in the pen with Jupiter like they likely are too young to get pregnant still, but I don't want to risk that. And also the big guys will just be bugging them and trying to breed them anyway. So I've got to build them a whole separate pen and shelter for them to be in. And I've got the breeding matchups to do. We've got a goat show that we're probably going to. I'm starting to maybe think I'm going to skip it, that we're going to be too busy. Uh, I've got a whole chicken coop to build back here so that we can then expand the goat barn so that we'll have the chicken coop and the goat barn put together uh, into a larger goat barn. I think I just had a fly go in my ear. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, and uh, I've got to get the the actual buck pen, their shelter finished. Um, it's been great for the summer, but we've got to get it winter ready. There's just, there is a lot to do. There is a lot to do. So the garlic is done though. That is one thing that's done. And uh, I've got a couple of really cool things that are coming up because there's a reason that I planted garlic. Uh, there's a reason why I'm going to plant more garlic uh, as long as I can get my hands on some, uh, some other varieties. And uh, we're going to start doing some things on this farm uh, to make it make some money. Uh, we're going to be adding some things just just the start of things preparations so that hopefully next year we're actually turning a profit here and uh we'll talk about that in the next video all right guys thanks for watching um i've got a couple of videos here that you may want to watch to catch up uh definitely helps the channel if you do don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it uh subscribe to the channel i'm trying to hit 10k by the end of the year i'm closing in on it but i could definitely use some help so please check make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you later Bye bye